the best way to store food long term is well here we go folks we're going to be talking about that today we're going to be talking about your vacuum sealed bags mylar bags canning jars and plastic containers and which one is the best and which one could be affordable for you to ensure that your food is going to last the longest the first thing we're going to talk about is a vacuum sealed bag a vacuum sealed bag once you vacuum seal whatever kind of product you want to put in here all right is going to last three to five times longer than its best buy date so if you have something that's got a best buy date that is say two three years out all right well it's going to last you five to ten times longer than that if you vacuum seal it now some of the things you have to be aware of when you're using your vacuum sealing and doing vacuum seal bags number one these are clear now, it doesn't matter what you put in here they're clear you have to have some place to store them either in a closet where it's dark in a tote in a dark room light is the biggest enemy of what is in this bag and it's going to take away from your long-term storage your life of your product because of the light all right now every once in a while you're going to want to pull these bad boys out and you're going to want to check the seal and make sure that it's staying sealed you're also going to want to inspect the product and make sure like this is rice so it's hard as a rock if it starts to leak it's going to lose that so at that point you need to take that one transfer it to a new bag and reseal it as soon as possible so you need to check those every few months to make sure that your products are staying up now if you're going to have a vacuum sealer you need to buy one of these right if you're going to vacuum seal your bags you got to have a vacuum sealed machine now I would highly suggest that everybody just stay with a good quality product that's been around for a while I'm not endorsed by them but I like the product it works well I've never had a problem and that's a food saver if you're gonna spend your money spend it on a company that's been around that has a reputation I'm a firm believer in that and anything that you're doing for prepping using your food saver if you'd like to use canning jars that we're gonna talk about next all right you got to be able to buy either the attachment for a large mouth or the attachment for the small mouth all right you have to buy those normally separately um, now lot. canning jars all right canning jars if you store their stuff properly and everything else you're gonna get 15 years at least if not longer it has to be out of light because let's face it folks it's clear as a bell all right now in this jar here I have put dehydrated vegetables that I've done and I use some out of here and then I'll reseal it with the vacuum sealer which is nice and easy you don't have to open up and use oxygen absorbers which are the most expensive thing and in here is a silica pack which I have a whole jar of right here now what these bad boys do is just so you know because we're going to do this you have to use a silica pack and put it in here you can put an oxygen absorber too if you'd like but you don't have to if you're vacuum sealing it you put the silica pack in here and this way here what it does is it pulls the moisture out so it doesn't let the moisture grow on your dehydrated products and give you bacteria so this way here it's a safe way to store dehydrated goods in here okay so just remember if you're going to do your canning jars it's got to be in a dark place and it's got to be stored below 70 degrees that's why a lot of people up north have basements they store them down there it's cool it's dark they're golden all right now let's move on down we're going to talk about mylar bags all right now mylar bags is probably the most expensive way that you can do and store your food now if you do store your food in mylar bags and you use the proper amount of oxygen absorbers which is going to be a chart coming up here shortly all right so when you do this you want to make sure that your mylar bag is solid and that's how you're going to know that you put enough oxygen absorbers in there because if you didn't it's going to be loose just like you bought it at the store or whatever it is and it's not good you have to get the oxygen out of here all right now I'm out with mylar bags you can buy them in packs you can there's all different ways you can buy them you can buy them in all different shapes and sizes all right you can get a gallon you can get these little ones you can get five gallon you can get these it doesn't matter folks the trick is 
With your Mylar bags, you always have to have oxygen absorbers unless you are storing certain products that we're not going to get into in this video because I want to try to keep this short and sweet. All right, I have done videos on things that you don't want to put in here, but you have to make sure you have oxygen absorbers. This thing is cram full. All right, and Per the chart, what you're going to be putting in there, a lot of stuff like pastas and things of that nature, you know, they take up a lot more oxygen absorbers because there's air pockets in the pasta, unless it's just regular spaghetti and there's no holes. Get what I'm saying? So other bags are your best bet for your money, as far as I'm concerned, because you're going to get 20 to 30 years out of your product. You can store them in a tote. You can store them in a a bucket you can store them however you want and they're gonna last a very long time and then, now one thing I do want to mention is the mylar brakes and stuff that I do use have the resealable here you're, so you're, you're gonna seal your product right up here with your iron or your mylar brake sealer whichever one you choose to use you can also use a straightening iron that the women use you can use those on your bags it just has to be hot enough to seal those together. But the cool thing is, is then you can take and just open these things up and then you can reseal them and they're still gonna retain their freshness until you get to use them again, which you're gonna wanna do probably within 30 days. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is plastic containers and literally that's like your plastic bottles and that, that nature. Now, I don't have a liter bottle. We don't bring soda, anything like that. So I'm using a water bottle just as an example. Rule of thumb with the plastic bottles is you got to put an oxygen absorber in here if you're storing rice and beans and that kind of stuff in here. It's about all I would store in here, but you can store what you want. I don't store anything in plastic bottles. I just don't trust them. All right, but that's me. You guys can do what you want. You can do it. All right, you're only going to get uh, between four and six years past the best buy date. For one, you know, they're not that thick. They're flimsy. Um, the seal on them, you know, you got to put tape or you got to do something to the top to keep an airtight seal on them. You got to store them in a dark place because once again, it's a clear product. Man. It's Man. something you'd like to do because you don't have a lot of money, but you still want to put away some food and you want to put away and you know it's going to last for at least, you know, four or five years uh, past the best buy date. Then by all means, you want, you want to do it that way if you can. I don't tip particularly do it this way, but you can do it this way. But I would highly suggest that you go a different route in doing and putting up your food. And this way here, you're gonna do the best way to store your long-term food storage, in my opinion, is obviously with Mylar bags. You get 20 to 30 years out of them. Yes, they are more expensive than anything else listed on the list. But then if you're gonna do vacuum sealing, you have to buy a vacuum sealer. You have to buy bags. You have to make sure you have the attachments and all those things add up really quick, folks. So you have to weigh the pros and cons on which way you want to do this. It's all on what you want. I'm bringing you the information so that you know what you need. Now, not all these could be for you, but you need to find one that you can afford, that you're comfortable doing, and that is going to meet your goals and expectations on what you are doing. Okay. So um, a lot of these products and stuff are in my Amazon storefront. You can go there and check them all out. Need. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank you for joining me on this video today. Thank you for everything you should do for this channel, for all of the likes, the subscribes, and all the shares. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.